So, Matt, we're going to move on to what should reviewers disclose about their games? We're talking about board gamers. Yes. Board game reviewers. So, there's a lot of board game reviewers online, maybe in one of them, who will get either free copies of a game or they'll get paid pre- to preview Kickstarter items or they'll get paid and a free copy of the game to do reviews, etc. There's There's... A bunch of different things that can happen. Right. So my question, or well, actually a lot of people's questions is, how much should they dis- disclose to the public? Like, what should your audience know about you and your relationship with the publisher and your and, in comparison to what you review? Let's we'll start with you, Matt. What, what are your just initial thoughts? Like, what do you like to hear from them and why? What do I like to hear? If they are receiving money... I don't look down on it, but I might want to be informed that they are. Um, just for... Are we talking about reviews or previews? Let, let's kind of separate those. Because I don't... Either. Either? Okay. Yeah. Because uh, I... I could see where the mindset might set in to where you're receiving money from someone to review or preview. And... You're like, hey, this is kind of nice, a little second income. Now, I don't know how much they give. Maybe they only give you twenty. I, I don't know. I have no idea if if someone was going to pay you money to preview or review. I have zero idea what that amount is. Let's say someone likes whatever the amount is, though, um, and maybe get a little scared that if they give too honest or negative of a review, that that will go away. Yeah, they're like cutting their their, their biting the hand that feeds them. Yes, yeah, so. And not saying that a company would necessarily do that, but I could understand where they might stop going with that person that's giving them, you know, negative feedback or something like that. Because they're obviously they're looking for a a good positive image to to get their product out. Um, But like I said, I don't look down on it. Just maybe putting a disclaimer or something in text form or at least just saying it. Fair enough. What about like free copies of a game? Let's just say there's no other thing other than just a free copy of the game. Do you want to know that or do you care? Well, you know, what's funny. Uh, um, upon, you know, you see threads about this every now and then. And I, I've seen where people make a big deal about that. I don't know if it's because me knowing you that that happens. Um, from hearing from other reviewers of it happening, just knowing people... Maybe I just assumed everyone else did. Like you assume most reviewers are getting their co- some of their games for free anyway. Yeah, I I always assume they did. Fair um, enough. You know, maybe it is from their personal collection, but I just assume in my mind that game was given to them by by a company. That's just how you prepped yourself to go into listening to the review. Yes, and with that though, I think I maybe I just assumed that everyone else knew that. Gotcha. So when I was seeing people kind of having problems with it, it was kind of like, well, that's part of the game. What do you, what's the big deal? But like I said, maybe they don't know that. Um, obviously, companies are trying to get their product out, so they they're flooding these copies out for people to to review and and put out. Now the same thing might happen there too, where you give a company too bad of a review on too many games in a row. Maybe they quit giving them to you. Right. Um. But that's part of the game too. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, there's there's been plenty of instances online. I've been subjected to a couple of them. There's been a Facebook post where a guy was going flipping out about you know the dice tower and how they like everything and blah blah blah. And I kind of commented, and he came back and was like, "Well, you should be receiving your money from this." And I'm like, D- "Why are you like what money? Like people are actually thinking I'm being paid by the dice tower, right?" That's not the case. I don't know where anybody ever said that I was being paid or any of the contributors to the Dice Tower are being paid. There's other situations that's happened as well. Not a whole lot. It, it, it thankfully is, is pretty low. But this does, you know, bring up the question of what if what are people's views on this in general? Because there is a lot of misinformation that people have. Mm-hmm. They 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 don't understand the situation, so they make stuff up. Or somebody thinks, oh, I think this is what's happening. Everybody else kind of takes that as, you know, fact. It's, I mean, a lot of people are wrong on 
what is actually happening. And so from my experience, here's what I'm saying. Uh, well, to answer the question first, I feel like if you get a review copy, I don't really see, like you said, I don't really see it that big of a deal to always say, oh, this is a review copy of the game before you start talking about your opinion. Right. Bo- board games aren't really that expensive. So, I don't know. It's not like it's not like you're watching a review online where somebody got the iPhone 7 <laughs> yeah. as a review copy. Right. You know, oh, they're going to be freaking ecstatic because they didn't have to pay for it. But, I mean, over time it could. I, I, I guess it does. One game it does by itself, up. maybe not. But if it's someone that wants to create a channel and they want to put out 100 videos a year, you're right there at it now. That's fair. And I guess some people could be swayed by that in some way. Right. Because they might be like, man, this company keeps giving me good stuff. I'm going to keep talking about it, like you said. Mm-hmm. So here's my opinions on it. One, if you're being paid outside of a copy of the product, it needs to be disclosed because that's almost dishonest in a way because it's like they paid you money to do this recording. Mm -hmm. And whether or not you're still being honest or not, you know, it's up to the reviewer to really pay attention and see how the person talks about it and stuff like that. Like, I don't know if you want to drop names on that one thread or not. Um, Oh, why not? Whatever. Well, there was a thread a couple months ago. Was it July? I have no idea on the time frame. I'm pretty sure it was July, but they're talking about the Undead Viking. If you're not familiar with his reviews, you could just YouTube Undead Viking. I'm pretty sure it's just YouTube.com slash Undead Viking. But he did reviews. And what was the situation? Uh, So I can cough in the background. (laughs) uh, Going off memory, the situation was um, it had there was a weird Kickstarter situation that wasn't discussed in the thread I read. Evidently, there was a lot of backstory that went along with this. Whether or not it plays into, I don't know. Uh, but evidently, it. I think he was just being questioned if he was receiving money, and by him not answering, was just taken. It, it's kind of like you're not saying the truth. You're not saying anything, so you're guilty just because you're not speaking. Exactly. So he was just getting flack for just not saying it. Whereas I think in the same project. Uh, uh, Nick from Board Game Brawl was disclosing it in some manner that was easily to see. I think he was putting text uh, at the bottom of the video or something, or maybe he just said it. it evidently, it was very obvious. Yeah, you know, there was no questioning that he did. You know, receive money to preview this game. Um, so I think it was just the 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 hanging question. I think was just kind of and then. Well, yeah, I think they also mentioned that some of. Uh, He's been doing a lot of Kickstarter stuff, so maybe he's, it was for that same company, and he was always doing positive reviews. He's and, not really saying anything, even pointing out little things. So the thread was actually geared towards should you trust his reviews? I gotcha. You know, so that that was actually the base of the thread. The, all the story in there was just to give a backstory on why the thread was started. Um, you know, I read through a little bit of it. It people kind of went this way or that with it, but. Some of the people were bringing up the fact that they noticed that with that certain company, it was always positive. Gotcha. Not a lot of negative to say about it. Well, let me let me finish all my my um, thoughts and feelings about it, and then we're gonna. I got something to bring up about this that'll that'll ease everyone's mind. Okay, here we go. So for me, a paid preview of a Kickstarter, you're an idiot. And I mean that in a very like offensive way. Okay. <laughs> you're you're very stupid if you're watching somebody promote a game that is not out and say a bunch of good things of it about a Kickstarter. It is without fact. Do you really think that if they even if they didn't pay the guy and be like, hey, can you check out this game? And even if they had to send it back and make us a review, if they said anything bad about it, do you think they would post that video? Of course, a Kickstarter project is only going to be positive information. You are promoting a product that is not funded, and you need people to fund it. Hey, guys, we got this great game. I mean, this part of it sucks, but, I mean, the game is really good. Right. Uh, the component quality is, eh, it's okay. The art looks like a five-year-old drew it on a refrigerator, but still, it's a great game. You should totally pick. You know, that's not going to sell. Right. That's not going to sell product. So, paid pre or previews of Kickstarter games or previews of games that are not out yet, I don't even care. There's no reason to disclose it. 
because it's already 100% in my mind that somebody is being paid to do that review or right. that preview. Sorry. So when I look at a Kickstarter video, I mean, I would rather see a rule book and allow me to read that myself because I'm going to get more useful information out of the rule book than I am going to have somebody talk about a game that is not yet finished. That just, it's stupid to even think that they're going to sit there and say anything bad about it. I mean, does that make sense? Do, does that? Well, I'm not familiar with Kickstarter, but I mean, it. Like, if you watch an infomercial, <laughs> they're not like, oh, this this thing, you could put it here to save space and everything like that, uh, but it really doesn't fit in 19% of the cars out there. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. I Like I said, I, I don't really mess with Kickstarter or anything. Um, I mean, I, I see your point. Um, so, so what you're saying then is, if someone's doing a Kickstarter project, though, they will never say anything. There's no reason to. Negative like, why about would it. you already put your product that's not out that you need people to fund? Why would you put it in a bad light in the first place? If it's a third party, like me and you are starting a game, but we had some really big reviewer review it or preview it. Sorry. Yes. If they sent us the video and like they pointed out every flaw to the game. Do you really think that me and you are going to post that as the Okay, well, maybe this is the part of it I didn't understand. Would they not say these uh, reviewers, they would not post it on their own channel? They put it on... So it's up to the company to decide if a video comes out or not? Typically, they'll post it on their own channel, but they'll link it into the Kickstarter page and stuff like that. So... Or they can they can go to a, a reviewer and say, hey, we got a Kickstarter. Would you mind previewing it? But the video is going to be exclusive to the Kickstarter page. So you can't post this content on your page. You know, there's different guidelines. Okay. I mean, some of it can, can be like, you could post it on your page and we'll just link the video into our Kickstarter page. But what I'm saying is, if a company is starting to get a product, it doesn't even have to be a board game. Like, why are they going to go through any sort of person that they know is going to give any kind of negative content condensation to it right so that's why they are paying them as well you know they may not be paid they may they they may be just doing it for a friend whatever but i would expect that any content for a preview of a product that's not released like there it, it is absolutely stupid marketing sense to have any sort of negative viewpoints on it is um, uh, you've mentioned before that Tom will not allow Kickstarter previews. Is that why, or what? What is his? He he was pretty. Yeah, I, basically on the Dice Tower, I can do reviews of published games. I cannot review games that are not published or previews for games that are coming out. The reason for this is because the same thing. He eventually for a while, the Dice Tower was doing paid previews. It was <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> But it was in big red and yellow text before the video. This is a paid preview for the game. But people are still stupid because in the comment section, they'll be like, oh, this game sucks. Because like a year later, they come back and be like, this game was terrible. Why didn't you point out all these flaws? Blah, 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 blah. It was a paid preview, dude. (laughs) If you're paying somebody. So I'm I'm assuming probably those kind of things would be like, I'm only going to talk about gameplay and a few of the things that. You know, I'm just going to not talk about the things that are bad. <laughs> Correct. Not that he was lying and saying, oh, this mechanism works so well with the game and right. it ends up being terrible. I'm just not going to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. Just omit the parts that, that doesn't, don't need to be said and highlight all the good stuff. Right. So that's all the paid preview stuff. If you're watching a video for a Kickstarter, the game's not published, it wants to be published, take it with a grain of salt, you're better off reading the rule book. Honestly, that's my my feelings on that. Now, moving on to reviews, I would automatically assume that most people reviewing board games are getting some of their copies for free. If they're just starting out, probably not. But if they've been in the game for a little bit, they're probably at least getting them somewhat. Right. Like, I don't get that many. Like, I've probably got maybe 30 at this point over a couple of years. That's not a whole lot, mm. but I don't do tons of reviews either. So right. percentage wise, it's pretty good for the games I review. Now I'm pretty honest and I don't really care. Like here's a good example of what I mean by this. Overworld games does good cop, bad cop. I praise them on every, 
uh, game they come out with every expansion but booze barons we uh oh was that theirs that was theirs okay yeah we we much, trashed it we blasted it pretty hard now that wasn't even a free to play copy or whatever I mean it's not like they gave it to us but I was already getting free product from them because I've got all the good cop bad cop stuff uh, well actually no I bought the original one but the uh, both expansions I got from them as review copies because of how much I liked the first one, right. like the base game. So at Gen Con, he was like, yeah, I saw your review of Booze Barons. I was like, yeah, I didn't like it. He goes, yeah, I realized that. <laughs> <laughs> but he was cool about it. I'm real. I don't care. If I don't, if I don't get a single review copy from now on, I don't care because I'm going to keep doing what I do. Well, you're still going to buy games. It's not like you're going to run out of things to talk about. Right. Yeah. It's only a bonus for me. Like, honestly, getting review copies just helps me get more games. I probably wouldn't buy at first, you know, because I do get a lot of games. I'm kind of like, I overlooked that. Oh, wow. This is pretty good. You know what I mean? Or I overlooked that. This is garbage. Right. So it does open it up a little bit, but at the same time, it does help fund what I'm doing because it is a hobby, you know, it, it does kind of pay the bills a little bit in some sense of the, of the manner. Cause I mean, I put a lot of time into it, but right. I was committed to doing it anyway. So I'm going to do it regardless. Mm-hmm. So, so should I, if I was getting paid outside of that, yeah, I should say something about it. A review copy is kind of like, you know, sure. Maybe I, I don't think I, I'm, I don't know how many times I mentioned it out of the, out of the times I should have. I have mentioned it sometimes on my reviews, but Mm -hmm. some of them I don't. Maybe I should be be a little bit more adamant about it. I don't know. But point is, I just, I agree with you. I would assume that if I'm watching a reviewer, probably some of their games have been given to them. Mm -hmm. If I'm watching a paid preview, it's 100% marketed garbage that you have to take with a grain of salt. That's my feelings on it. But you know what's not a feeling? What's that? The Federal Trade Commission who guidelines all this crap <laughs> and is going to basically answer all our questions on what you should and should not do. Okay. So I researched all this stuff. There's a couple of, of lawsuits that happened recently. A lot of these are video game related, but they're very similar, such as Warner Bros. Uh, in July of this year, the settles uh, Fe- Federal Trade Commission charge because it failed to adequately disclose it paid online influencers to post gameplay videos of only positive reviews. So Warner Bros. actually sent out copies, money, and all kinds of stuff to get complete positive reviews and everything. Nobody should talk anything negative about it. The Federal Trade Commission said, we don't like that. They hammered it down. Hmm. Here's the thing to keep in mind, which we'll get into in a minute anyway, but for the most part, the the FTC is not going to go after an individual. They're going to go after a company because the company is the one, it's like the drug dealer. You know, you can't really get mad at the the people doing the drugs, <laughs> but the, the drug dealer is the one setting it all up. So in this case, if Asmodee started sending out all their games to all the big reviewers and just paying them to do good reviews and no bad reviews, one, you flood the market with an incredibly positive stuff about your game and you, you cover most of the, of the audience. And so... The smaller guys may have to buy the game, review it, and be like, hey, what's going on here? Right. And that's kind of what happened with this. I mean, there's a whole article on here. You can just, uh, I'll post it in the video comments on YouTube if you want to check it out. But or otherwise, you can just type in Warner Bros. FTC charges. It was over the uh, Shadow of Mordor Lord of the Rings game. Okay. This also happened uh, a year ago in 2015 in September. Xbox One promoter. Uh, settles FTC charges that it deceived customers with endorsement videos posted by paid influencers. All these influencers are YouTube personalities and celebrities and stuff like that. Mm. So let's actually go a little bit farther here. And on the FTC website, they have what's called um, guidelines for endorsements, right? And these are frequently asked questions about endorsements. And it specifically says in here, you know, what's an endorsement? Getting a free copy of a game is an endorsement. So in the Federal Trade Commission's eyes, with me getting a review copy of a game, it is endorsing me to do something. So because, you you know, they're paying for me in some way okay, by giving me free product. So here's a couple of 
highlights that, I mean, there's a whole, like I said, I'll, I'll put more in the description, but here's a couple that I just want to point out. So, um, one of the first topics is what is the legal basis for these guides? And it says, if an endorser is acting on behalf of an advertiser or company, what she or he is saying is usually going to commercial speech and commercial speech violates the FTC act if it is deceptive. So for instance, paid previews of Kickstarters, right? They pay you money, they give you the game or whatever, and you go in there and you start spouting all this good stuff. Sure, there's a loophole if you want to say, I'm not going to, I'm going to omit all the bad things. But if you start praising things that are actually problems with the game or praising like, oh, and it does this so well, blah, blah, blah. You're actually being, dis- uh, you know, you're being deceptive because you're telling, you probably know that it sucks, but then you're telling everybody else it's great. Mm-hmm. So anyway, the FTC conducts investigations and breed cases involving endorsements under Section 5 of the FTC Act, which generally prohibits dis, uh, or deceptive advertising. In that case, a paid preview is technically advertising because, one, the game's not finalized, so you're advertising a product that is being released or coming out to try to get people to invest in it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So... Here's some, here's some more specific ones. What if I upload a video to YouTube that shows me receiving several products? Should I disclose where I got them from? Yes, the guidance for videos is the same as websites and blogs. Here's, here's a couple more. I won't read all of these, but is there a special warning I have to use to make the disclosure? No, the point is to give your readers or viewers the essential information. The simple disclosure like company X gave me this product to try will usually be effective. Hmm. And then it says, um, what more should I say if I got a product? Um, it, here's an example. It says, if an app developer gave you a 99 cent app for free in order to, for you to review it, that might not have much weight uh, on your readers, you know, for your review. Right. But if the app developer also gave you $100, that would have a much greater effect on the credibility of your reviews. So a disclosure that simply said you got the app for free would not be good enough. So you would need to say that you got paid to do that review as well. Right. Now, it does say in a, in a later thing that you don't have to actually disclose the amount. So even if you get $10 or $1,000, you just have to say, I was paid and compensated a little bit, you know, after outside of being uh, getting free product. Right. That's enough. But so, I mean, there's a, there's just a couple of things in here. It talks about like, you know, I'm doing a video video review of a game that's not released yet. Uh, the manufacturer is paying for me to, to review it. Uh, and it says, um, I was planning on disclosing the, the man that the manufacturer gave me a sneak peek and all this other stuff. Uh, it is, uh, isn't that enough to put people on notice in my relationship with the manufacturer? No, it's not enough. Getting early access doesn't mean that you, that you got paid. Getting a sneak peek of the game doesn't even mean that you got to keep the game. If you get early access, you can say that, but if you're paid, you should say so. Um, let's see. There's two more I want to point out and I'll be done. So the other thing it says here, I I won't read it. I'll just paraphrase. Putting notes in the comments of your video is not good enough. You also, if it's a long video or it's a stream of a gameplay video or something like that, you got to say it multiple times throughout the video because people may not watch the entire thing. Right. It also suggests not putting it at the end of your video because most people do not watch most YouTube videos to the end. So, I mean, so whether we feel like it or not, it seems like every bit of this needs to be disclosed in some manner. Interesting read. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, what's your thoughts on that after hearing that stuff? My thoughts on that is uh, <coughs> I don't think I hardly ever hear that. Yeah, no. Like, I don't think I've ever watched a review video where they said, oh, this is a, a, a copy provided by the manufacturer. Now, I will say on the Dice Tower, they do note that in the outro. Like, you know, sir, I don't remember what they what Eric says, but right. he does state, state that in the podcast. Okay. But... Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. Like I said, I don't as far as review copies, board gaming is a little bit smaller, so it's not like the mass conglomerate the video games is, but I feel like it should just be assumed. Like I 
personally feel that on a website or on your description of your channel, just putting in there, like, I do receive free copies of games or whatever. Right. That would probably be okay for me, personally. Like, I'm not going to, like, see, oh, this guy's not telling me every single game he got in his videos. Right. But if you're getting paid outside of that, yeah, you better say something. Mm. So. Any final thoughts on that, Matt? I'm very educated now. <laughs> and you will be, too. Just check out the <laughs> description of the video. So.